Brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the feast of St. Pius of Pietrocina. It's listed in the official uh, missal, but we know him more popularly and belovedly as Padre Pio, St. Padre Pio. Padre Pio was born in 1887 in a small Italian village called Pietrocina. His birth name was Francesco Forgione. He became a Capuchin friar and a priest, and at a very young age received the stigmata of Christ, just as the Seraphic Father, St. Francis. Francis received the stigmata just two years before his death. Padre Pio bore the stigmata and the pain of the crucifixion for 50 years, so for most of his life. He lived then for this entire time in San Giovanni Rotondo in Italy, where he was much sought after as a spiritual advisor, a confessor, an intercessor. Despite his notoriety, he was known around the world and people flocked to him by the thousands, he would say of himself, I only want to be a poor friar who prays. He was devoted to our Lord in the most blessed sacrament, to prayer, and in particular, to the prayer of the Holy Rosary. He died in 1968 at the age of 81, and he was canonized by Pope St. John Paul II in the year 2002. Padre Pio is a most remarkable saint, uh, particularly noted for the mystical phenomena, which were to him almost, as it were, second nature. As I say, I think he was 18. I might be wrong about the age, but very young, not, not more than his mid-20s when he received the stigmata. And so these visible signs drew much attention to him. Uh, besides that, he had many other mystical gifts. He was said to be able to read hearts. He knew when confessors were being forthright, when they were withholding sins, when they forgot something important that they needed to acknowledge. He was seen in various locations at the same time, that mystical phenomena of bilocation, uh, he had regular conversations with his guardian angel who would translate letters that he received from all over the world in languages that he didn't speak, and he could reply to them, to the specific uh, questions they put to him or requests, even though he didn't read their language. And as I say, people flocked to him by the thousands. Uh, they, people waited day and night to be able to attend his Holy Mass or to have him hear their confession. And he also accomplished uh, incredible good works. In particular, he built a great hospital, a very advanced uh, hospital for those days where care was given to the poor and anyone who needed it free of charge. And all of this he did as a poor friar living at San Giovanni Rotondo. All these things make him, as I say, remarkable, and that might also make him seem inaccessible as an example of great holiness, but not one that we could imitate. Uh, and as far as the mystical phenomena go, that's beyond the power of anyone to acquire for himself. That's a gift from God. But that's not what made him holy. Those were signs of his holiness, that, that God worked. But as St. Paul said of, of the mystical gifts in the letter to the Corinthians when he wrote the famous chapter on love, if I speak in human and angelic tongues but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. 
And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. So this is a, a truth that we must keep in mind when we consider St. Pio. These gifts are remarkable. They drew much attention to him, but they weren't the substance of his holiness. His holiness was great love. And in particular, the love that our Lord put forth as the greatest commandment, to love God above all things with all your mind, your heart, your soul, and your will, and to love neighbor as yourself. And this is what is remarkable in St. Padre Pio, that he had that love of Christ, love for Jesus Christ, but because he was so united to Jesus, he loved souls for the sake of Christ and as Christ did. And as Christ, he suffered the, the 50 years of the stigmatization was like 50 years hanging on the cross. The pain was constant for him. And yet he willingly accepted that, that he might save souls. Where does that leave us, we who are not stigmatized? Well, we can still imitate St. Pio, and in a very particular way. St. Pio prayed the rosary constantly. His devotion to Mary was one of the outstanding uh, characteristics of his spiritual life. And his devotion to the rosary was probably second to none ever. He was seen to be praying the rosary constantly. It's said that he prayed upwards of 50 rosaries a day, so more rosaries in a single day than most of us pray in an entire month. And his reason was very, very simple. He said, if the Blessed Virgin always recommends the rosary so fervently, appearing at Lourdes and at Fatima, doesn't it seem that there should be some special reason for this? It was enough that our Blessed Lady came and stated that she wanted us to pray the rosary every day to motivate St. Padre Pio to do that and to recommend it to all. We are just about a week from the month of October, which is the month of the Holy Rosary. And so it's a good time to remember this devotion, this ardent devotion of St. Padre Pio to this powerful prayer with which he bound Satan and with which he obtained so many graces for all of those who entrusted themselves to his prayers. He went to Mary to obtain the graces, and there's countless testimonies of miracles received through the intercession of Padre Pio, and certainly he went to the Mother of God to obtain those miracles and graces. Right now, at the chapel, as you probably know, we're praying the rosary every day in union with tens of thousands of people across the country and around the world in a 54-day novena to ask for graces, in particular for the conversion of America, return to faith of the American people, and for protection of the church at this time when there's so much confusion, and in a particular way, protection from heresy. Uh, there's many rumors circulating about strange doctrines that are being proposed for consideration at the upcoming Amazon Synod. So this is a time to pray, if ever. And the prayer of the rosary is the one that Our Lady recommended, especially uh, famously at Fatima, when she showed the children the vision of hell and so many souls that will be lost unless we, like St. Pio, take up our rosary and pray, and more importantly, convert our lives to conform ourselves to the will of God with that generosity that leads to the crucifixion. As our Lord said, if you want to be my disciple, then you must take up your cross and follow me. And that wasn't an invitation only to the phenomenal saints such as St. Francis and St. 
Padre Pio, but to each and every one of us who are called to be the disciples of Christ. And so we who are weak in, in, in the flesh and weak in the will uh, can still become true disciples of Christ, especially if we go through Mary and if we take up our rosary and uh, implore her to help us, as St. Pio did every day, many times a day, constantly. May St. Pio intercede for us with the Queen of the Holy Rosary and make us also ardent devotees of her and of this powerful prayer that is within reach of every Christian. Praise be Jesus and Mary.